Hi, my name is Damien Munns from the Good Back Pain Clinic and you might know me from the videos where I show people how to fix back pain with the ASPE machine, the ASMI, Advanced Spinal Mobilization Instrument, Antispasm Mode, Defect Mode, Immobilization Mode. But today I'm going to do a little video, not about the ASPE machine for a change, a little video about how to treat your own back in the house without needing to come for therapy. And this little, these techniques can be very effective indeed, and they're very, very nice and simple to do. First caveat is, if you try them and it seems to be making your back worse, don't do them. I'm not a fan of doing exercise per se over a bad back. I like to do passive treatment whereby you as a patient pretty much do nothing and the therapist does the work. I'm not talking back cracking here, I'm talking using the ASPE machine, using electromuscular stimulation and also ultrasound at certain frequencies and, and settings. And I generally will only give exercises to patients towards the end of their treatment. So this is really for people who would already be in that category, people who have like twingy backs rather than a wholesale, oh my back is killing me type back. But you know, if you do it very slowly and it doesn't make any worse, maybe give it a go. But if it makes it worse, then cease to do it. Because exercise is what you generally do when you have a good back to be stronger. Now, the exercise, now that what I'm going to be, the main one I'm going to be doing is the good back modified curl up. Now, there is something called a curl up, which is essentially a sit up, which is very bad for your back because as you lift half, it's, it's, it's a sit up basically. Sit ups are very bad as you lift your, if this is your head end of your body, as you lift up your back, you're essentially curling your back. And so you're bend, bending your back and then the compressive forces like a, a squash ends in the lower part of your spine while you've got your back bent, which is exactly the same mechanism as bending over to lift up a heavy weight, which you'd never do. And so it's, so the famous Dr. Stuart McGill has come up with, I think he came up with it, he certainly made the noise, the biggest noise about it, um, the modified curl up whereby you um, kind of um, do a sit up that's not a sit up, at the moment you, you only just lift up as a centimetre, the moment you're off the ground tall, um, you're back, you know, you're, you're getting work done uh, that you want to do without then bending the back by, because you're only going up a centimetre. Um, so my, one of the things that people will talk about when I will mention this to, to people, they go, oh, that's uh, strengthening, your, strengthening your core. Well, it's, for my money, as it were, it's not really strengthening the core. Strengthening is what you do when you're feeling, you, you have a good back and you, you can go and do lots of these things and um, then strengthen the core. It's more of a, I tend to use the phrase, uh, stabilization exercise. Because at the end of it, your muscles are probably your muscles. Are, I think are already strong enough. Basically, it's just that they're not firing at the right time. Because what you can have often with some of those twingy backs is your where well, you have your back here, and they the back muscles that kind of sit either all around the whole spine. They sort of act as as stabilizers for the spine, so they kind of sit around that's clear. And when, when you move, the trick is, instead of you collapsing, which you would do if there weren't any muscles around the place, these muscles stabilize your back to stop the back moving when the rest of your body's moving. Now, of course, you can bend to the side and twist and bits and pieces, but generally, whereas these sort of muscles in your arms and your hips and your knees and your feet, they're kind of like designed for moving, the back is designed to the back muscles are designed to stop you moving, stop your back moving and collapsing when everything else is moving. Now, and, and what can happen is um, you get, if your back is injured and you, and you have a bad back, so your back is injured, um, the, this sort of, as you move, the back muscles can be a bit lazy and a bit too slow to fire. And you get the, you get the movement and then the back muscles kick in. And in, in the, the distance, the difference between those two means that you end up with a small micro movement of the spine. And when you already have a bad back, that sort of can grate 
against the um, the nerves and cause those little twinges to happen. So the stabilization exercise that I'm going to look at, which is the good back modified curl up, which is a modified version of Stuart's um, modified curl up, is um, basically to sort of just wake your muscles up so that when you, instead of it move but stabilize, which means you've had a micro movement, your back muscles are switched on, woken up and will move and, and will switch, will, and your back muscles will contract to stabilize you just as the movement's happening so you don't get those, those micro movements. And it can be very, very effective in terms of getting you out of um, chronic back pain. So here we go. Um, just a quickie, why should you bother listening to anything I say? Um, and why do you not stick with Stuart McGill? Um, uh, well, I, we actually shared a patient last November, um, a fellow called Henry. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, Henry's in Vancouver. Henry had a back that was so bad it was the, the, the base of the back kind of came, came up and a kind of reverse lordosis, like a kyphosis in the lower spine. And he'd had several treatments with Dr. Stuart McGill and uh, he was on Zoom um, while uh, his, he was being tr directly treated in, in his house because he couldn't move to get out of the house to a therapy room by Stuart McGill's daughter actually who was a therapist in Vancouver. Eventually, after about five sessions or so, Stuart McGill threw up his hands and said, listen, your back is so bad, it's even beyond me, uh, you're going to have to go for surgery. Um, instead of going for surgery, Henry came to me and sent me an email, said, can you fix my back? And I said, ah, it's not even the worst back I've fixed this week. And so then we got a therapist in Vancouver, a local uh, PT, as they call them, a physical therapist, who agreed to treat Henry under my instructions on video and within a few days he was up and running walking again. Um, within a week he was walking outside and within, after, after, just after a month he was back at work um, light duties and a couple of months later he was back at work full duties. Henry couldn't move. He, he was absolutely, he couldn't walk down the corridor. He was in agony and I couldn't sleep at night, so that's you know, very spiny. and he was so bad even Stuart McGill gave up with him. So I, 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 you know, that's my credibility as well for uh, listening to what I have to say. Uh, Stuart McGill uh, has uh, these three exercises, he's well worth listening to, he's an absolutely brilliant doctor, he has a couple of problems which I can go into now for quickly, um, but Stuart McGill's big three exercises, and this is one of, I'm taking one of his exercises here and slightly modifying it, um, they're brilliant, um, and you know I, I use a lot of Stuart McGill's work in treating. Who, who, what therapist doesn't use a lot of Stuart McGill's work nowadays? A um, couple of problems I have with Stuart McGill. Um, where does injury come? Where does a bad back come from? Stuart says a bad back comes from your use of the back, of the back. And so, for instance, you're he's saying you're always bending over and then com coming back in you know, continual flexion and extension and you're doing that if you do that under pressure uh, compression forces as well you'll get your herniations and you kind of um, work that out from looking at working it from cadavers and um, you, you get a dead body that's been donated to the university and he was doing this these motions with the, the dead bodies and the, the discs herniated the herniations looked identical to what the herniations you get when humans are alive and he joined two and two together and said, well, this, you know, these actions will cause you herniations. But what um, a dead person doesn't have, but a live person does, does have, is a repair system that when you've done that and you've damaged your discs and you've weakened your ligaments and you've weakened the collagen, he's all right about that. If you have a rest in between hand and your repair system is working properly, your lymph system, then um, it, gets, it gets repaired. To focus on what I do um, when I'm dealing with Henry um, and, and all my other patients is to not to say where did the injury come from in the first place particularly um, I, I say well why hasn't your back got better well, your back hasn't got better because your repair system is not working and let me get your repair system to work and then you can your body will fix your own back so it's, I work um, basically electro enhanced um, lymph drainage and I use the ultrasound as well as part of that then I used the ASCII machine, but I couldn't use something Henry because he was in Canada and my arms weren't long enough. 
So then the other issue I have with, I have two disputes with uh, Stuart, uh, the rest of his work is fantastic. Where does injury come from? And he says the, the way you move your back, which is not wrong, but I don't think the main issue where it comes from. I think the main issue comes from an old injury. Now, uh, Stuart will respond to that by saying, well, the data shows that's not true. And then I'll respond, to, my response to that is that I will have patient in after patient, and I will say, they'll have a bad back, and I'll say to them, well, I think your in your bad back. I think your bad back came from a previous injury. It didn't come from genetics. It didn't come from you being a, a weak personality, or you know, it, it came from a prior injury. And they'll say, oh no, I didn't have a prior injury, which pretty much is the sort of thing that would map go into Stuart's data, because when you look at data in the world of like the academic world, there's lots of questionnaires, and they'll say, do you smoke? Yes. What age are you? what type of job do you do, and you know, have you had a prior injury, and they'll get ticked as no. Um, so then what I then do, to the, and that's then data, and then that data gets analysed, and injuries don't come up in that data as a big source of big correlation to the people with bad backs. What I then do is I say, did you fall off a horse? Did you have a car accident? How about go-karting, rock climbing, trampolining? Trampolining is a big one. And either the patient themselves or uh, their wife, mother, a family member might come with them, which is common. But what about that time you fell down the stairs really badly, you couldn't walk for two days? Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. So I see that these patients have had a prior injury. The data will sh take their first box of no, but unless you pester them, as it were, and ask the family and friends about pre prior, their prior, uh, previous injuries, then you'll, it'll stay as no. But when you ask the, when you poke basically um, the history, and you know, this could be 10 years ago, it could be 30 years ago, these injuries, then, you know, it, oh, it does reveal that they did have a serious prior injury. Um, so I think, he's, I think his data is wrong basically, and he's a lot of garbage in, garbage out of territory. And medical data is famously um, very poor quality. Um, I used to work in data, and I've worked in banks and telecoms and the medical world and the data in the medical world is just really, really poor and it's famous for being really, really poor. So you've got to be very careful about doing analysis on medical data um, and it's, it's, a, it's, not, it's a well known problem. So why I'm mentioning this is in the work Stuart's done is really good. He brought the, the, the work of fixing bad backs thousands of miles, light years ahead of what it used to be until his work, until he came along and did his work. The only problem with it is not, he's not fully there yet, and the worry is now that his work is going to be the new orthodoxy and stack cause the whole area to ossify, and yet actually there's a few more things, a few more steps we could do which would really dramatically, really dramatically add to Stuart's work to um, get the world of our backs far better than it is at the current time. Um, so what did I cover the two? One is where the injury comes from and then how to treat it. And Stuart is almost zealously religious in terms of it has to be the patient driving this with the with exercises and that kind of stuff um, and, and, the, and the retraining of the use of the back. In my view, um, and he's, he's very derisory of what he calls passive treatment where the patient just lies there or sits there or whatever and the therapist does things to him. Uh, or her, and actually, when you're got a really bad back, that's exactly what you need is passive treatment, and you do exercise and that kind of stuff when you have a good back or your back is neatly better. So these exercises I'm going to do um, hardly exercise at all because you're going to do them in bed basically, uh, and they take about 20 seconds in the morning, 20 seconds in the evening, and I'll show you right now what they are. So what you do is first thing in the morning is you get rid of the pillow. Like this, you want it. You want your head flat on the thing. Then what you're going to do is you're going to lie down flat, and you're gonna, in order to maintain, because you're on a mattress, it's quite thick. You're gonna have to sort of like get your knuckles like this, and um, but you put them under the small of your back, and that's to that's not to do a back bend. That is to maintain the natural curve of the lower spine basically it's not exact not, not going to exaggerate it uh, you're just going to support it so it doesn't push 
back against the, and go flat on the ground, which is something they do in Pilates, which isn't very good for you. And you can read all about that in Dr. Stewart's very good work on it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to get kind of, how you do it is you breathe in, you then take a nice breath, nice gently, then you think of it sort of like as a, it's very smooth, it's almost like a, a ballet dance or a bird flying up in the sky and, and kind of cruising into gently coming down again. I think it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's almost art. You kind of breathe in, then you build up a brace around your whole abdominal region. You don't do the Pilates thing of sucking the, the belly button in. You want it more out as if somebody was to try and um, punch you in the stomach. You want, you want a protective brace all around. And that's what you need to stabilize the spine. Again, Dr. Stewart will explain all about that in these books. So, and then what you do is, so you breathe in, build up the brace, and then what you do is you ever so slightly rise like that, to come down, release the brace, and you release the brace after you come down. The first thing you do, when you do that the first time in the morning, it will feel awful. It will feel like the first press-up you do in the gym after six weeks of not doing the press-up. All it started to do is wake your back muscles up. It doesn't really strengthen them. It's not, you know, it's not enough exercise to strengthen anything. But it was a horrible thing to do, and it felt very uncomfortable. Hopefully it didn't feel too painful. Then you do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and it just gives a chance for the, the back to kind of recover and get some stuff in there. Then, and you repeat. And, the good, and you don't want to repeat, because it, it was a horrible thing. It felt oh, really horrible and yucky. When you repeat it, it's a lot easier. After, after you have given a little gap of three seconds, so then reassured that you're alone. So you breathe in, do the brace, rise up, and you go, actually, ah, that's not so bad this time. Now, if you put your head forward, which people do, kind of just put it back again so you don't want it leaning forward. Come down, release the brace. And you count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Breathe in. Put on the brakes. Come up. Go down. Release the brakes. And what you, that's it. And that's it. You do this in the morning before you get out of bed. And what it seems that it's not strengthening anything. So you're not strengthening your core with it. It's too light an exercise. But what it is, it's just waking up the muscles as if it's the first press up you do in the gym and afterwards your muscles are, and your arms feel a bit more awake. And it's all about sort of like, instead of it, you, if this is, if I'm, my head is my spine and this is the, the stabilization muscles, instead of you kind of doing some movement and then the, the muscles engage to stabilize the spine and by then it's too late because you have a little micro movement. And what happens is as you move it, the muscles are awake and will provide the stabilization that they're for. Um, so without, without too much ado. So that is what that exercise is for. Stuart has three big exercises, um, and you, which is very similar to that one. He has one for his modified curl up, he has one leg up. Uh, he has less of a thing in front of it, behind it for the curve. But we're doing this on a mattress and not a gym mat. So if you're on the gym mat, you would just put your hand underneath it. Um, so, and his exercises go on a little bit longer. Mine is literally only 20 to 30 seconds. And you also do it in the, in the evening as well, and just before you go to sleep. And one, I think more the effect it has in the evening is not so much the, the, the coordination, which, you know, people can get woken up with back pain in the middle of the night. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, a, a um, stabilization exercise, it will have an effect there as well. But most of the repair work that your immune system does, that your lymph system does, to your to fix your mad back, actually to fix anything in your body, happens at nighttime when you're asleep. And so, by doing that sort of exercise, you as well as you've one of the other things you've done is you've engaged the muscle pump to actually pump out lots of the lymph in the area of the old stagnant lymph. 
and you uh, now fresh lymph can come in and do the repair work. Which is something Dr. Stewart doesn't mention anything about, because that thinking about pumping up the lymph is all the Dr. Sherwood stuff, Dr. Paul Sherwood stuff, that, that's, um, is how you, I got Henry better. Um, it's all about kind of cleaning up the stagnant lymph and why is it stagnant? It's stagnant because there's muscle spasms and the muscle spasms are basically instead of muscles contracting and relaxing all day long they, because of the injury you've had to the spine from this old trauma injury the muscles contract and in a spasm stay contracted for decades that eventually causes the discs to be basically squashed um, A for the pressure uh, anyway, because there's a lot of pressure there. B, at night time when you lie down, the, the, the disc would normally fill up with water a little bit, and that's sort of up and down of the discs helps to get them some nutrients in, so they stay nice and healthy. But because it, there's, there's no up and down, or there's less up and down because there's a muscle spasm even when you're lying down, they don't fill up with water, and they don't get any nutrients in them, and they become weaker. Um, and so, and then they end up the gaps between the vertebrae get closer and closer and the nerves get hit and discs pop out and slide out and cause pain and stuff. Dr. Sherwood's stuff, which we use at Goodback, is all like releasing that muscle spasm, um, um, then pumping out the, the lymph that's stale, allowing fresh lymph in. So it's all, it's all the stuff we do at Goodback and it's all the stuff that is, you match what, and at yeah, Goodback we use uh, Dr. And Stuart stuff as well, but we primarily because I really with high end bad backs here. Uh, Dr. Stuart has it that he has people that nobody else can fix, and over at Good Back, I fix the people that he can't fix type thing. Um, so, and we do it by this technique of using it, which I from Dr. Paul Sherwood, which is um, now left us in a few years ago. Um, right, okay, so this is goodbye from me, Damien Mans, and goodbye from the asking machine. Um, let's have a quick go there. Work. everything else doesn't work that's the aspirin machine that then fixes the backs that nothing else will fix